Hey everyone, this is Sam from Wargamer Online. Today I am going to show you how to paint an Iron Jaw Brute, one of the new Orc models or Uruk models from Games Workshop, and they're absolutely fantastic. They've got so much character and detail to them, and I'm just going to be painting a really nice armor color scheme as well as a dark and grungy skin tone. So the whole model has been primed with Chaos Black spray cam and I'm applying Deathworld Forest all over the skin areas. Now when it comes to painting these guys their front armor plate can be put on afterwards so what I would suggest if you were doing these like in a unit or whatever is the armor plates put on like a cocktail stick and paint them separately and that way you can get in between the head and the body and all of the skin tones there because this was extremely difficult to do. I already had 10 of them built when I started to paint them so it took longer than it should have done so that's just a little tip for when it comes to assembling them separately I normally don't bother but on these it's definitely worth doing it but build up the green skin tone and I've done three layers of this just to keep it smooth and consistent now once that's fully dried I'm gonna put a Thonian camo shade all over the skin and you want to make sure it goes into all of the gaps in between the eyes and all the creases so that it has a nice lot of depth and shade to it because uh, the next step is going to be highlighting it and adding more layers to it okay so once that's fully dried you're going to need to wait at least an hour an hour and a half just to make sure it's done we're going to apply deathward forest now and we're going to skip all of the recesses and keep the paint thin and we're going to just pick out all of those raised areas Deathwood Forest is a really nice green. It's definitely one of my favourites, and th this was one of the test models for my own Iron Jaw army. And I've stuck with the green because I absolutely love it. Can't go wrong. We're going to use Elysian green now in the same sort of way, picking out all of the raised areas, so the the top of the nose, on his eyebrows, and the top of his ears. But we're leaving the Deathwood Forest in a lot of areas. He just wanted to pick out certain bits. But no, this, I mean, any excuse I get to use this green, I use it. I did it on some Death uh, Blight Kings. Blight Kings with this skin tone is great. Orcs, obviously their entire skin tone can be painted with this. So it's a good excuse to use the paint. And it's just a really nice colour. Normally for things like gemstones and stuff, I'll use um, a much more uh, darker green, like Warps, uh, what's it called? Caliban green like a dark angels green and then going up to a moot green which is really really vibrant but this one ends up quite neutral while still being sickly and forest looking so I really do like painting with this the one thing I'm doing with these layers especially on these because they've got quite big flat areas that are muscled is I'm painting texture onto it using the brush so all of my brush strokes are following the area where the muscles go and you can see I'm purposely leaving gaps and lines just to add a little bit more definition to them and the same with the fingers I'm picking out the top parts of the fingers and the hand and leaving dark areas so that that's what your eye looks at you can see the, the difference when you're on from the tabletop Okay, now we're going to use Ogryn Camo, and this is really just to pick out the very edges and the very points of like the eyebrows and the ears and the top of the lip and the chin. Anything that's got like a point or just a, a bridge, paint the top of it. Keep the paint thin as well, and that's what's going to make it stand out from the battlefield. Um, the other thing is we're going to use a wash on this later on. We're going to wash the entire model. You can leave it at this step if you quite like the contrast that the brighter uh, green gives you. Um, but I generally wanted to blend the whole model together and make it dark and grungy. So I use a wash just to blend all of it together. So you can see here I'm going to be outlining a lot of the muscles using Ogryn Camo. I'm not doing a layer highlight. It's effectively an edge highlight but it's on muscle. It's just lining all of the areas, and that's why I use the wash later on. But if you look now at the elbow and the arm, look at the back, what it looks like now. As soon as you start putting these colours on, they're quite stark and bright, but they stand out, and that's what you want it to do. Unless you're going for a crazy blending skin tone, which will take you longer, a lot longer to blend all of it but it will look nice. I'm just going for this because I like the textured look and the definition that you get from it.
and these models are pretty much skin and armor. Once you've got those two nailed, you're sorted. So this is the wash that I'm using. Skip it if you liked it as it was before. But this is Agrax and Norn Oil, one part each, and then two parts Lamy and Medium. And I use this wash on a lot of stuff because it, it doesn't have as many nasty watermarks as if you put the wash on without the Medium mixed into it. So the armor color that I've chosen here is Stegadon Scale Green. And again, this is a really nice color. You don't really see it used that much by people, and it's really good. I used it on a Eldar Wraith army, and they look more like Dark Eldar in the end, but it, it did look nice, so I wanted to use it again. So once you've done all of the base coat on the armor, we're going to pick out some metallics, and we're using Lead Belcher for that. He's got some chainmail hanging down. Not all of the brute models have that on them. Some of them have got bits of cloth hanging down. Some of them have got chainmail. Just paint accordingly. I'm going to add a little bit more of metallic, uh, well, some more colours. So we're going to use Balthazar gold, and this is just to pick out some of the plates. You could pick out, again, a shoulder pad, or you could do a wrist pad. These iron jaws are pretty much just picking up scrap metal, smacking it into um, an arm, like a plate of armour so that they can use it. So you can, they could have all different colours, and it would work. So I'm using a bad and black here. Um, you can imagine them like punching Stormcast Eternals and taking their armor and then going back and nailing it onto their own. And there are trophies that you can put on these guys which are like Stormcast helmets and things. So you can do what you want in terms of colors. Just going to paint all of the wood on the weapons now. And we're using Rhinox hide for that. And we're also going to paint the leathers, which is all of their trousers. Some of them, you could do the, the cloth hanging down from their waist. You could do it in this Rhinox hide as well and all of the straps holding the weapons to the waist as well. And we're going to use Rakarth Flesh now and we're going to add this to the like the banding of the weapons and around the, the ankles and the wrists. So any sort of bandage looking material I'm using Rakarth Flesh and I'm pretty much picking um, a very limited palette so Rakarth Flesh is for all of that stuff. Uh, I'm using Rhinox Hide and the Browns for all of the leathers. And then you've got the skin and the armor and then a metallic. So there's not a huge amount of different colors on there. And it's so that the model doesn't look like a rainbow. <laughs> Although he is looking quite bright for an iron jaw, I have to say. So we're gonna add some bone onto this guy now we're using Xandri Dust as the base color for this. And they've got all sorts of trophies. As I said before, you can get like Stormcast helmets that have been stuck together with some blades and some rope so you can mix a lot of the colors that you've got together on these trophies so I'm just picking out the horns and the teeth and the helmet on this and anything else that's bone now we're just gonna repaint the mouth area we're gonna use a bad and black for this this is to get it back to how we need it before we start putting all the teeth in and we're also just gonna paint the claws on his hands just so that they've not got browns and greens mixed onto them. So the same wash as we used before, Agrax Norn and Medium. We're going to go over all of what we've just painted. So all of the bone, all of the browns, the Rakarth flesh, um, yeah, literally everything other than the skin. That's the only thing we don't want to paint with this stuff. And then we can start highlighting up the armor now we've got the messy wash out of the way. So we're using Cabalite Green for this. And we're using a thin brush and edge highlighting as much as we can, but also following. You can see on the back of the armor, there's all these little where they've been hitting it with hammers and stuff. You can paint down all of those lines, and they're not straight, they're all kind of wiggly. So just follow the lines with your brush and use very thin paint and just build it up gradually. And this bit does take time, but you've just got to remember that you've got skin and armor for these, and then they're pretty much done. There's not a lot to them. Next step is using Sibarite or Sibarite green. And we're doing this the same way, but we're not painting as much as we did before. So this is more focused on the very edges and just parts of the lines that go down the armor. But this will make it stand out more. And we're just going to follow it. You can see what it looks like now from that darker green. This just makes it so much brighter. It's a lot 
need to. You could dry brush this as well instead of using the small brush and going over each individual line. Dry brushing will be a lot quicker but it wouldn't look as clean by the end of it. Okay so now that's done we're going to go over the black in exactly the same way we're using Esh and Grey and we're just going to edge highlight all of the points. So any, any areas that you painted with the black just go over it now with this grey. Just going around the edge and then picking out the lines in the middle. I've only done two little bits on this guy. But you could keep it themed, you know, these could be like Space Marines. You could have one shoulder pad in black and one in gold if you wanted. And it's a little bit too organised for Iron Jaws, but it's your army, you can do what you want. And then the final highlight for this black, rather than using a brighter grey, I've just used Rune Fang Steel as if it's been chipping away. So you can add some, you can use some foam and stipple on some silver later on if you wanted to. I've done a few videos on weathering using foam so you can have a look through the, the library of stuff and find out how to use that. It's quite easy but it's good to do battle damage. We're going to use Runefang Steel as well just to go over the gold. It's the same way, just an edge highlight. And you could use a lighter gold, again this is just to keep the palette consistent and smaller. So we're going over all of the gold, doing that edge highlight with the same colour. Now the next step, the next stuff for us to do is the, uh, we've got leathers and we've got the weapons, the hilts. So starting with Doomble Brown, just painting on some wood grain. And you just want to leave some of the Rhinox in the recesses. And we're going to pick out those areas with tusk or fur now, just very small, thin lines, and paint in the same direction that the, the wooden stick is going, so that you can add texture and lines to where it looks, you know, correct. I'm going to highlight the leathers now, we're going to use Gorthor Brown, and we're going to go over all of the straps on the armour using this. And you're going to pretty much do a layer highlight here, you want to cover up most of it, but just leave the very recesses. And if you've got trophies on their shoulders or bits of rope in the, the Rhinox hide, go over it with this now and just pick them out. Now the legs, we're going to use the same colour. And you can see I'm just picking out raised areas here. I'm not doing a full layer highlight. I want the Rhinox hide to show underneath it. I'm going to use Bane Blade Brown the final highlight and all of the leather. So just go over everything we did before and it's mainly picking out the edges here. And just giving some line texture. The legs on this guy and generally looks quite cartoony but I, I like the way that he looks with this. It's not as realistic but it's good. And then he's got these staples going down his legs just like holding his leather you know, cloth together. So we're using Runefang for that and we're going to pick out all of the little bolts that are on his armour using this as well. And you can see that they do pop from the rest of the armour. Just use a small brush and be as neat as you can and just add a tiny bit of paint onto him. There's quite a lot so it, it's uh, worth spotting them all. And then we're on to highlighting the bandages or the straps around the model. And we're using the same Rakarth flesh as we did for the base colour. Keep the paint thin and work your way around it. And just make sure you leave some of those. You can see the lines in between those uh, straps. Just make sure they've got a little bit of the darker colour in between them. He's really starting to come together now. He's almost done. We're just going to add another final highlight using Pallid Witch Flesh. And this is mainly just to add some lines onto those bandages. pretty much there, we've just got to do some of the bone and we'll do the bone next and then we'll go on to the blood effects and then he just gets stuck on his base and he's ready to go. Okay so highlighting all of the bone now. We're not using Xandri Dust as the first highlight, we're going to go straight to a Shabti bone so it's a lot brighter. 
and as we've done with the rest of this model we're just painting in the texture so on this horn we're starting from the where it joins to the, the head and we're dragging the paint out and just leaving some lines on there and we're going to use screaming skull and do that in the same way but just paint it towards the tip of the horn this time and that's that's all of the highlighting done for the bone and there's some of these have got little bird bird schools and talismans all over them so just make sure you find those and pick them out okay we're just going to do some of the smallest details we're just going to paint the he's got his claws and he's got his teeth so we're using xandri dust and you can do this at the same step as painting all of the bone i've just waited till everything's done and done it last because there's not much on them and you just want to make sure you paint on the actual teeth themselves they're quite pronounced so you don't need to go into all of the gaps so you've got that nice dark black on there already just bring them out with a shabti bone now and you will need a small brush this is probably the smallest detail on the model the only thing smaller is their eyes the, their eyes are absolutely tiny I'll try and get some pictures up of the ones that I did for my army but they've all got yellow eyes with black pupils on them and they are definitely small I think dwarves even have bigger eyes than these guys do so we're just going to pick them out here with pallid witch flesh and I've not shown it but I'm pulling blood letter into it which is a glaze and that's the eyes done very straightforward you can, like I say, pick out the pupils, but it's up to you. So, almost the last stage now before we go into adding some blood. We're going to use our Agrax Norn and Medium Wash. And we're going to go over everything on the model again with this thin wash, other than the skin. So that's the only thing that we don't want to paint. Now, it's up to you. If you liked it before with it being quite bright and contrasty, you don't need to do this step like I keep saying with these washes. I just want them to look darker and grungier so I always add this and it blends a lot of the colours together. If you were going to be blending colours um, like say you were doing a wet blend you wouldn't want to chuck a wash on afterwards because you're wasting all of your time wet blending to then ruin it with a wash. But this is just a quick and easy way to get a nice blend um, on an army so you can get a, a good standard for your whole army. Last part is putting blood on. So we're using Tamiya Clear Red and old Games Workshop black ink and just mixing it into it. And use a naff brush or you can get um, you know big brushes from uh, stationery stores for like a quid and you'll get like four or five brushes that are not that great and you could just use for painting blood on. I've always got a spare brush for that. And just apply it. Um, I've got videos on painting blood effects but this is just the final part of the model.